Ever since I was a child, I can remember reading the Hornby printed catalogues in the 1990s and just looking at what was on offer back then with such desire. One set that always caught my eye was the high speed train, the Intercity 125. Well, in 2023, here I am with my very own Intercity 125 high speed train set, the Hornby R695. This particular set dates back to the period 1990 through 1992. And I found this on eBay for a very reasonable price, had it shipped to Sri Lanka. It was quite well packed as you can imagine with a lot of bubble wrap and packaging material. That's why you've got tape and stuff here. That's why the box is in less than ideal condition. But that doesn't matter because the train was in excellent condition when I got it. Although the seller said it was a used item, well, either it's been very lightly used, very carefully or not at all. I mean, even I cannot achieve this level of careful use as has been achieved by the previous owner of this train set with my own trains. So in this video, I'm going to take you through what's inside the box, the individual components of it. I'm going to set it up on a temporary oval in my son's room and I'll run it on my own layout and show you how it looks. So that's what's coming up in this video. Stay tuned. Time for unboxing. Now this train set is a little too large to keep on my table in my typical unboxing area. So I have to do it on the floor. Let's get started. Okay, let's open the box like that. Inside what we have is, we've got the curved tracks, we've got the straight tracks, we've got the power adapter, we've got the Hornby controller, this is the power car, this is the dummy power car, and we've got two intercity coaches in what's known as the Swallow livery. Now this little thing here is a Hornby super sound unit, which was quite a neat little sound generator thing back in the day, which allows you to use the buttons on it to play various sounds as the train plays. This, the train runs sorry the sound doesn't come from the train it comes from the speaker on the sound unit and the unit is completely independent of the train set it's battery powered in fact i'll demonstrate it for you in a bit too now let's look at the individual components of this train set all right let's take a look at some of the contents of the box i can't put the box here because like i said it's too big so i've kept some of the contents where you can see them and some are off camera let's start with the power car now this power car has directional headlamps only, it doesn't have red tail lamps when going in the opposite direction. That's something I may upgrade later. And you can tell it's the power car because you've got the motor bogey here with the traction tires. Hornby's use of traction tires is questioned by some. It gives decent performance but it does leave residue on tracks sometimes. But so far I haven't had any issues with it as long as you keep your tracks clean. Now this power car feels quite nice to the hand. You can see the detailing is very nicely done. And it's from the made in Great Britain era of Hornby, before Hornby decided to outsource manufacturing to China. So yes, this is definitely a 1990s product as I mentioned earlier. Let's put the power car away. Let's look at one of the coaches. There are two coaches, they're identical. Once again, very good detail on this, the printing, the colors everything just feels spot on i'm going to show you the wheels there you can see they are near pristine whoever ran this and owned it before me was extremely careful with it this is the dummy power car it has directional headlights too which means that the wheels have pickups now these aren't your conventional pickups this is the older split chassis of sorts design where the front bogey takes power from only one side of the wheels hence one rail and the rear bogey takes from the other side of the wheels the other rail so if you dismantle these for cleaning you've got to be careful in the order you put it back because if you don't put the wheels in the right way then both bogies will be picking up from the same rail or worse there may be a short circuit that's one thing that those who service and repair older hornby locomotives need to be aware of because the pickup is determined by the direction you put the wheels in see the plastic gear kind of thing there and if you look you can see the wheel center is plastic that is to insulate the wheel on this side from touching the track because the rear bogey's wheels touch that side and you can see the configuration is reversed for the rear bogey. So that's how Hornby did it in those days with a split chassis kind of arrangement. Next up we have the power transformer, your typical 13 ampere UK plug, nothing much to see there, puts out 15 volts DC and that connects to this controller, the R965 train controller. Now this controller is interesting because it's the older iteration of the R965 which is the made in England one and several YouTubers 
have found that this has different internals to the newer R965 made in China controller. I have a newer made in China controller as well which I used to use before I got my Gauge Master controllers. It will be interesting to see how this old controller fares because well this has not been used by me. So far I have run this train set on my permanent layout only with my Gauge Master controllers and it's run exceptionally smoothly. I was really impressed when I took the set out of the box. So let's put the controller out of the way. Let's get the super sound unit out. Here we are. Now, I've already popped a pair of AA rechargeable batteries in there. So you switch it on like this. Okay, so what I can glean from it is that when you switch it on, the train is running at speed, so to speak, as per the sound. And when you want the train speed, the sound to change to the idling sound of the engine when you're at a station, for example, you've got to press and hold down the idle button. Of course, horn does what it says, and when you press the horn, it cuts everything else off. So you have the sound of the locomotive running, and suddenly when you press the horn, the locomotive goes silent and the horn sounds. And when you release the horn button, the running sound comes back again. I should note that the locomotive is not actually making the sound, it's coming from the speaker on the unit because this is a totally independent thing so you could just put it somewhere else, use it as a children's toy or whatever but I'm not going to do that, I'm going to keep this because these super sound units are quite rare from what I glean searching on the web in fact this may be one of the few reviews of one so maybe I might do a separate video on it later, let's see okay that's enough about the unboxing oh but before I wrap it up totally let me just show you one other cool thing that was in the box this a little mini version of hornby's 40th, 40th edition catalog and just going through this when i got the set alone brought back all those childhood memories of seeing what was available this was when they had the thomas the tank engine range as well the train sets the locomotives everything that was available at that time i mean it's it's enough to give you those rose tinted glasses again <laughs> pretty cool and I'm sure I'm going to be reading this many times in the future. Okay, let's go and set up the train set now. Let's get started. First things first, I'm going to make my curves. And I'm going to do this in real time. I'm not going to speed this video up or anything. Just to show you how actually it is quite easy to set up a Hornby train set. Now the first thing I note here is that the curves are a little bit loose. So that means yes, this set has been used before happens if you tend to always connect and disconnect them but then that's easily fixed by just taking a plier and tightening the fish plates okay there you are 280 degree bends have been completed next thing is to get the straight cut out first i'll do the far end or rather for you the near end close to the camera now this train set came with actually a fairly small set of track which is what is actually known as first radius curves so or R605s if you know your Hornby stuff. Later Hornby high speed trains and things don't run on R605 tracks simply because it's too tight. So now what we've got to do is we've got to fix the controller and what we are told is there is a place here, ah there we go, where the two arms of this power clip just simply slide in and set like that. So we put the control in the off position just in case. Track here. Final piece of track. Okay. Let's just make sure that everything is in order. Okay. Now this is the power car. Now you want to get your wheels on the track properly, which is why on being true that railer slash uncoupler thing that I spoke to you about that was missing from this set. But if you are fairly competent with your model trains like I am, putting the rolling stock on the track shouldn't be too much of a problem for you. So already we are seeing that the track is just a little too small for this beautiful train set to properly show itself off which is why right after this session you'll be seeing some 
video of it running on my permanent layout. Okay, done that in there. Switch on. Are you ready? Let's see how it goes. Okay, I'm giving the power to it. Nothing seems to be happening. Well, I didn't expect that to happen. Of course, I hadn't tested this before, so it seems that the power controller is not working. Let me go and get a power controller and come. Right, so after a bit of tweaking wires here and there, I got it to work. Maybe just to lose connection, I'll open up the controller later. So here goes. Well, I must say, we've got a slight derailment there, that's fine. Okay. Now, of course, I can't run this at too fast a speed because the curves are simply too tight to just fly off the rails. We can already see that the dummy power car is having trouble staying on the tracks because of the tight radius of the curves. Yep, that's not going to go for very long, but I'm not going to keep it like this for very long. Because now let's go and see how it is on my permanent layout. So there you are, my review of the Hornby R695 high speed train set, a bucket list item for me ever since I was a child going through those glossy catalogues. In a future video I'm going to show you how to upgrade the lighting on this and maybe even put in directional lighting so that you have red lights as well as the white slash yellow headlights depending on the direction of travel. That plus many more great content is coming on my channel. So be sure to subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.